Mic check. All right. Yeah. Hi. Hi, David. All right. Thank you. Um, all right. Welcome, everyone. Let me uh, just pull up my document here. And we'll start the study for tonight. Tonight's study, The Last Trumpet. You know, as always with uh, every other study, uh, I have the tendency of saying this is an interesting study. And surely by God's grace, all the studies are interesting, uh, especially uh, as we begin to, uh, you know, to compare spiritual with spiritual and see if we can actually, uh, by God's grace, bring the, uh, the language together. Um, so the study tonight, the last trumpet, and I want to start with Revelation chapter 10, verse 7. Let's see if I can get these to post. I have a lot of colors here. Let me try. Okay, did that post? I think that verse is on the screen, right? Revelation chapter 10, verse 7. I didn't post. Hmm. Okay. Uh, hold on one second. Hey, Desi, welcome. Uh, we're just getting started here, and as always, Pal Talk is not allowing me to post these verses at one time. Okay. Thank you. Um, let me go ahead and get the last part. There should be uh, the first part of it on the screen, right? And then that's part two. Okay, Revelation chapter ten, verse seven. We're we're looking at the uh, we're looking at the last trumpet. Now let me let me start off by asking: Does anyone here would anyone doubt that the seventh trumpet is already sounding or has been sounding, or is that something we look forward to sometime in the future? What about the seventh trumpet? I just posted Revelation 10 verse 7. Hopefully, uh, I think there's some things in between there, but it should uh, it should be on the screen. But in the days, uh, wait a minute, are you? Did that not post again? I tried to post in two parts. The reason I'm looking for uh, my verses here is because I have the the formatting there. Hold on one second. Let me. Uh, does everyone see this part of it on the screen? Revelation chapter 10, verse 7. That work. Okay, good. Let me go ahead and uh, see if I can get the other part. And this one also should be on the screen. <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, it might mean, you know, normally uh, I do get a message if the verse doesn't post that it's not actually on there. How about this one here? Look like I had to post it in three parts. Do you see uh, something on the screen there? You're kidding. Uh, I'll tell you what, uh, I may have to refresh. Let me go ahead and refresh my page. Uh, don't leave. I'll be right back. I have to leave the room for a second and then come back in. All right. Let's try this again. Um, Revelation chapter 10, verse 7. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel. Bear with me one second. When he shall begin to sound. Let's try this way. How about this? Is that on the screen? There should be something on the screen there, right? Okay, great. Thank you. I think we're finally getting there. I'm not sure why I wasn't posting before. Okay, let me go ahead and read this verse. Revelation chapter 10, verse 7. In the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished. 
Okay, now, so the question that I raised um, has the last trumpet, the seventh trumpet, has that been sounding anyone? Or is it something that we anticipate? Yeah, I would say so, uh, Rose. The seventh trumpet, I believe, yeah, yeah, that's something that we're going to talk about here also. The mystery of God. What does it mean that the mystery of God should be finished? This is a very uh, uh, frightening verse for me anyway. Uh, when God here, uh, we're looking at the mystery in Colossians chapter 1 verse 26. For example, uh, take a look at a few verses having to do with the mystery. What is this mystery of God that is finished at the sounding of the seventh angel? Who is the mystery that's in view? Even the mystery? Yes, exactly, Rose. It has to be Christ. You know, uh, God uses a variety of terms. And when we think about it, when we, well, we try to pick up the gospel, we begin to realize that, or at least suspect, that God there is talking about Christ. But it says here, even the mystery which have been hid from ages and from generations. Well, we know during the New Testament, right, the gospel was going out, and it was still, there was still something mysterious about the gospel, right? Because God has to make someone born again. He has to bring them into the kingdom. He has to bring understanding to them. The Bible also speaks of that time as the time when the believers were on the milk of the word, right? So, you know, salvation has always been a mystery. This is why, you know, God is the one who has to make someone born again. We start looking at some of these verses, for example, Matthew chapter 11, 25. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things. Now, there are things, correct me if I'm wrong, there are things that were hidden even during the New Testament church age, and that would have been Christ, right? Until someone becomes born again, and they begin to understand a little bit about the uh, salvation that God has uh, provided. They understand that they were under uh, the wrath of God. And then God brings uh, revelation to them. They begin to understand the Bible. But what about the ultimate mystery? What is it about the Bible today that was also hidden? Right? Can you think of what that is? What is it about the Bible that was actually hidden? Now, even though God, uh, I believe, was saving, yeah, definitely, the end of the church age, judgment, right? judgment on Babylon. Now how is it that uh, we really did not have any idea or understanding on the nature of this judgment? Don't we read in Daniel chapter 12 verse 4, Thou, o Daniel, shut up the words. Yes, exactly. Shut up the words and seal the book even to the time of the end. Now we're looking at the mystery of God, right? We understand by God's grace that that is really pointing to Christ. So during the New Testament church age, uh, people are becoming saved. So they come in contact with this mystery, even though they're not understanding fully the nature of it, right? And especially when we look at Daniel 12, that God had sealed the book to the time of the end. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 32. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Everything in the Bible, it seems, pretty much, right? Anyone here disagree? Pretty much everything in the Bible is speaking of Christ. He is the Alpha and the Omega. The whole Bible is about Christ. So, this is a great mystery. I speak concerning Christ and the church. That is the kingdom of God. Ephesians 3 verse 4, whereby when you read, ye may understand my knowledge and the mystery of Christ. So Christ is this mystery.
uh, Rose writes, is that the eternal or corporate church? Well, uh, it is both, uh, I believe, and, and I'll see if I can explain a little bit further uh, later on. God is looking, you know, corporately, I believe he is looking at the whole church body. Many are called, but few are chosen. But we know, as far as the eternal church, these are the true believers that God today, as he brings additional knowledge, additional revelation, he is separating the wheat from the tares. And now God is establishing a new foundation, new Jerusalem, right? So yeah, the Christ and the church, ultimately it is the eternal church. But I think we'll see, Lord willing, uh, when we talk about some other uh, areas here, that God has a great deal of concern for the even those in the church that are unsaved, right? For God so loved the world, corporately he loves the whole church body. But at the same time, he places conditions around it. That if they're not uh, if they're not bearing fruit, I am the vine, ye are the branches. The branches that are not bearing fruit, what happens to them? They are thrown into the fire. Right? Okay, so we know that Christ is concerned with the church body. So there is a mystery there as well. The New Testament church age. 1 Corinthians 15, 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment in a twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. It's very important, Lord willing, that we establish... Uh, let me get the rest of that verse here. And the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Is this talking about the last day? Is that talking about the very last day when God is going to resurrect uh, the dead bodies? A general resurrection? In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised and corruptible, and we shall be changed. Is this talking about the very last day? On the surface, it appears to be saying that, right? And I don't doubt also that uh, there could be a, a dual application there. I'm not saying that God is not going to resurrect the bodies of the believers as well as the uh, the unsaved right on the very last day but you see the problem with this if we make that the primary uh, understanding of that verse what do you suppose happens what happens when we literalize this verse if we literalize this verse then we begin to lose the thread I believe Lloyd in Iowa. Hi, welcome to the room. If we literalize this verse, you know, the Bible says we have to compare spiritual things with spiritual, right? So it's very important, Lord willing, that we allow the rest of the Bible to define the terms. And when we start looking at these verses spiritually, we begin to understand more and more uh, God's purpose for the churches and congregations. Uh, Rose writes, I was thinking it could be the change of a person through salvation. Well, it is. It is. I believe it is, Rose. Uh, but what I'd like to offer is that more specifically, in the context of the end. Remember we saw earlier, the mystery of God should be finished. God has a lot to say, it seems. The Bible has a lot to say about the nature of the Great Tribulation. Matter of fact, I would even dare to say that almost the whole Bible, there's a lot in the Bible that I see uh, by God's grace that ultimately they were pointing to the time of the end. But what happened? How is it that we were not able to understand these things? Well, we said earlier that the book was sealed, right? The Bible was sealed, and God had to wait until the very last uh, moment that we call the tribulation. And now when he calls the believers out of Babylon, now there is a, 
there's an increase in knowledge and God is bringing revelation to the believers now look at the word moment here this is a word that for the most part almost always it appears to be identifying with the great tribulation number 1621 separate yourselves is that a clue is that a time reference when is it that the uh, God separates when does God separate the believers from the unbelievers spiritually today right let both grow together until the harvest talking about the wheat and tares separate yourselves come out of for my people do you see that in that verse come out of for my people I think that's implied there isn't it from among this congregation isn't that what God is doing today yeah separate yourselves from among this congregation come out of for my people that I may consume them in a moment yeah but you notice here that God is using the word moment there I believe it, it identifies with the time of judgment the great tribulation Psalm 73 19 how are they brought into desolation as in a moment who is it that is brought into desolation Babylon right ultimately Babylon is fallen come out over my people Isaiah 54 verse 8 and a little wrath I hid my face from thee for a moment see that moment is the time of tribulation it is judgment coming on the body and then it's in the same moment the same hour that's the day and the hour it's the same hour now God begins to give the believers the word to speak now they understand time and judgment right so in a little wrath right the little season when God was hiding his face from the church body now you know keep in mind that we're uh, the Bible is always current events so even though you know we can look at these verses on the individual uh, level also I believe before someone becomes saved God is hidden from them they do not understand salvation they're separated from the kingdom and then God brings uh, God saves them he makes them born again but I believe again that all these verses ultimately the major focus of these verses is really talking about the great tribulation and the depart out so this moment here I believe identifies with the great tribulation and now God is going to redeem the body right for a moment I hid my face from thee but with everlast everlasting kindness will I have mercy on thee Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 20 destruction upon destruction is cried for the whole land is spoiled suddenly are my tents spoiled and my curtains in a moment so can we see a pattern there Lord willing okay uh, the mysteries of God 1 Corinthians 4 1 let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God Christ is the mystery the Bible is the mystery of God right Christ is the Word of God 1 Corinthians 2 7 we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery even the hidden wisdom very interesting uh, Revelation chapter I'm sorry that's Romans chapter 16 verse 25 uh, to him that is of uh, power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret now the reason I'm going through some of these verses we're trying to pick up a, uh, a thread here and also try to determine the timing of the sounding of the last trumpet the mystery of God should be finished so now here's the question if the seventh trumpet now think about this if the seventh trumpet has already been sounding what does it mean that the mystery of God should be finished Christ is the mystery right the gospel is the mystery wouldn't this imply 
it is judgment again it is judgment well yeah uh, Christ is also revealed but is, is, is Christ actually revealed to bring individual salvation or is he revealed to bring the believers out of Babylon remember we're looking at a separation very very important Lord willing that we you know I talk about this again and again uh, at least this is the way that I'm seeing it when God speaks of salvation we have the salvation that is the sealing right the individual sealing but now God is uh, we're reading that the mystery of God should be finished at the sounding of the last trumpet God it appears it appears today when the seventh trumpet began to sound now if you see something different uh, please don't hesitate uh, to share you know you can raise your hand I'll give you the mic uh, I think through the Bible yeah Christ is revealed through the Bible it's because God is unsealing the Bible and that is the salvation I'm proposing that God is uh, bringing to those who deliver their soul they're coming out of Babylon and that is I believe salvation it is the redemption of those that had been scattered does that make sense now take a look at this uh, this verse here again Revelation chapter 11 verse 15 and the seventh angel sounded Lloyd in Iowa writes when does our Lord stand up well he has stood up I believe already that that's what we're uh, trying to determine here is whether or not the seventh angel the seventh trumpet you know there are those that are looking at uh, a definite date in the future for the sounding of the seventh angel but some of us here believe uh, at least I, I suspect that some of us believe here that when God is speaking of the seventh angel it's the time when God began the separation of the wheat from the tares now we're not going to get into the exact timing of it uh, right now although uh, you know that's an area we can also uh, you know explore but I think it's sufficient to say for now that uh, some of us believe that Christ has been revealed he has stood up how well through the Bible why because he is judging those in the church the churches and congregations how is he judging them by blinding them by bringing a famine of hearing they hear the word of God they hear the gospel but unless God is blessing that gospel then there is no salvation that makes sense uh, Bible boy writes are you concluding that the rapture in the end is the no no I'm not concluding that I do believe that there is a last day I do believe that God is going to uh, bring an end to this world but you see the main difference is that I am very very reluctant As a matter of fact uh, I don't think I have the biblical authority to use these verses in connection to a last day does that make any sense that's why you know when I, ra uh, I raised the question earlier yeah I raised the question earlier about the resurrection right in a moment uh, 1 Corinthians 15 52 in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump now many people read that and they say well that's talking about the very last day well perhaps uh, you know the last day is implied there but I'll be honest with you uh, if we make that the primary uh, understanding of that verse then we are going to miss the more profound the deeper spiritual meaning that Lord willing is going to bring us the truth and that is to understand how these verses relate to Christ and the church Christ and the church Christ and the church that's the gospel that's the mystery 
how is God dealing? What's his plan for the, uh, the churches and congregation? And the only way that we are going to unravel this by God's grace is by allowing God to define the terms. That's why, you know, when we read uh, the phrase in a moment, we don't want to brush that off. We don't want to read that and then just uh, kind of, you know, skip over it. We have to search the Bible to see how God is using the phrase, right? Trying to understand, trying to pick up the main thread, the underlining theme. And then we begin to see, hopefully, how God himself, how he is actually relating these verses to the very last day, that is the great tribulation, judgment on Babylon, and the salvation of the, of the body. Now, we see here in Revelation 11, verse 15, the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven. Notice what they're saying here. The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. Is God saving today? Has the kingdom been completed? Now these are some very, very profound questions that I, I wrestle with, you know, uh, almost on a daily basis. And I try to be very, very careful, Lord willing, as I uh, share some of these verses, at least my understanding of them. When I say, yeah, well, God is saving today, but the salvation that appears to be in view is the redemption of the body. Why the redemption? Well, because when God was hiding his face during the little season, the believers were scattered. The whole kingdom, right? The two witnesses, they were killed. And now God, it seems, he is bringing revelation. Now he is separating the, the wheat from the tares. And it's almost as if to say now the believers have stepped into the new kingdom, right? The heavenly kingdom, that is New Jerusalem. So we read here in 1 Corinthians 15, 24, Then cometh the end. The end of what? What end is in view here? Is this talking about the end of the world, the very last day? When he shall have delivered of the kingdom to God, even the Father. Is that the end of the world? The very last day? I used to think so. There's a lot of language in the Bible having to do with the end. Matter of fact, I, at some point it was very hard to try and separate the, the physical end from the spiritual. The Bible does speak of the end of the world, I believe, as the end of Babylon. The end of the church body. The end of the church age. That's the primary focus, I believe, we see when God is talking about the end. And in Revelation 12, verse 10, And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation. See the, the pattern there? And strength and the kingdom of our God. God, it seems, the moment he began to unseal the Bible, now the mystery of God is finished. Christ is revealed through the Bible. God is judging the unsaved in the body. How? Or through the famine. There's a famine of hearing. Many people today, it seems, they have a very difficult time understanding the spiritual nature of the revelation of Christ. Why is that? Well, because God is the one, I believe, who has to, uh, through the Holy Spirit, He has to allow them to, uh, to see Christ in the Bible. Revelation eleven sixteen, And the four and twenty elders, which sat before God on their seats, fell upon their faces and worshipped God. And then in verse 17, saying, We give thee thanks, Lord God Almighty, which art and was and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and has reigned. Now notice the very next verse. I may have to break this one up also. Verse 18. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come. Is that talking about the last day? And the time of the dead that they should be judged. 
Now let's stop here for a moment. Let me go ahead and post the, uh, the last part of this verse. Now again, please, let, let's, you know, as we look at these verses, uh, we'll try to keep one thing in mind. The one thing that I'm offering is that we have to, we realize that, okay, well, that's, that's a good question, Rose. How is it that God is reigning today? Matter of fact, I think if you look, uh, if you read that verse again, we might begin to get a clue. The nations were angry, and thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. Is God talking about judging those who perhaps uh, you know spilled a boatload of uh, oil perhaps in the Gulf? Is that how people destroy the earth? Uh, you know, destroying the ozone layer perhaps? Okay, uh, good night. Thanks for coming by, Lloyd. Uh, that's the way that I used to read this verse, you know. That thou shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. Uh, well, we try to have a Bible study here uh, 7 o'clock Eastern Time on Sundays and then Tuesdays and Thursdays 9 p.m. 9 p.m. during the week. So you're welcome to come by anytime. Okay. Yeah, so let's think about this. You know, we, we have to be spiritually minded. We put our spiritual hats on. We keep in mind always that God speaks in what? How is it that God speaks in the Bible? You know, a lot of times it is very easy, uh, I know it is for me, to lose track of that as we read verses. And yes, exactly, Bible boy. He speaks in parables. And that's something I think we, we always have to keep in mind. So as we read these verses, they're very dramatic, right? And they will, on the surface, they will give you the impression that God is talking about the very last day. And I, you know, I think by God's grace, and if we think about it, perhaps maybe they were designed to do that as a way of hiding truth if we're not allowing the rest of the Bible to define the terms, right? Yeah, God speaks in parables. Without a parable, he did not speak. So when we read these verses again, what's a parable? Well, we know that a parable is spoken unto the house of Israel, it would mean that somehow there is a gospel message in the verse and we have to try and pick up the, the judgment of it and the salvation side. Make sense? Yeah, so God speaks in parables. Thou shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. Is that talking about those who physically destroy, destroy planet earth? I don't think so. Uh, perhaps, you know, God eventually is going to bring judgment on, uh, you know, the unsaved in the world, right? As I said, I don't doubt that that's going to take place. But this, I believe, we have to look for the gospel. We have to look for the spiritual meaning. Those who destroy the earth. Uh, that would be their death. Yeah, yeah, the ultimate judgment, you mean, Rose? If we're looking at a final judgment, yeah, certainly God is going to. But exactly how that's going to take place, yeah, uh, I don't know. And what I was offering before when the question was raised, um, yeah, there is going to be an end, but can I use these verses to tell someone about what's going to happen? What do you think? Someone came to you and, and they, you know, they're trying to understand some of these verses. Not conclusively, yeah. I, I find it very difficult uh, for me to tell anyone about what's going to happen on the very last day, you know, as I look at these verses. And why do you suppose this is? Well, because again, the Bible is a spiritual book. We first have to find the gospel, and then we begin to understand, Lord willing, uh, what God has say, or uh, what God is saying. I used to think I could be as. I was corrected. <laughs> yeah, but you know, like I said, you know, some of these verses are very dramatic. And unless we keep in mind that God is speaking in parables, then we are 
automatically, it seems, going to try to relate these verses to the very last day. Okay, so what I'm proposing here is that Revelation chapter 11, verse 18, those who destroy the earth are the locusts, the false prophets, the thieves. Remember, they also killed the two witnesses. And the earth that's in view there, what is the earth that is in view spiritually? We talked about this before. The church. Yes, Desi. It is the churches and congregations. Spiritually, God refers to them as the earth, the world, the sea, the city, the nations. Just a variety of names. And so we have to look at the context very carefully. So those who destroy the earth, these are they. You know, they came against Jerusalem to battle. And then fire came down from God out of heaven and destroyed them. So it's the same principle, I believe, that's in view here. Uh, so this judgment then would not be placing it at the very last day. If we agree that the seventh trumpet is already sounding, and this judgment is actually taking place, right? The time of the dead, that they should be judged. But what about the reward? What is this reward that God is giving unto the servants, the prophets? Now take a look at Revelation. Yes, it is salvation, Rose. But I'm going to propose again, and then, you know, we'll, I don't want to make too much of it uh, right now because that's not the main topic of this. Uh, I believe it is the fact that God is unsealing the Bible so that you and I and others, perhaps, Lord willing, uh, the believers, the elect, at some point in time, they understand the nature of this judgment and now they deliver their soul. They're no longer subject to the rule of the locust. That makes sense. The thieves, the unsaved in the body, they're no longer subject to the false prophets. So that is the salvation. That's the redemption of the body. God is separating them from the unsaved. Revelation 22, verse 12. Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. Is that a crown, a literal crown? that the believers uh, have to look forward to? No, right? I think as you said here that this reward is really looking at the redemption of the body, the salvation of, of the believers as they come out of Babylon. 1 Corinthians 3.13 Every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire. What is this fire? It is judgment, right? It is the Word of God today that is judging Babylon. Now take a look at this verse right here, a very controversial verse, I believe, which did not post, thanks to Pal Talk. Let me go ahead and break it up. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10. Is that talking about the last day? But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise, and the element, the element shall melt with fervent heat. Is that talking about the very last day? Well, perhaps, again, there is an implication there, but I think by God's grace, the only way that we can understand these verses is by allowing God to define the terms. What do we say the earth spiritually or symbolically represents? It represents the church, right? So it is God's wrath. It is His, uh, the fire of God's judgment. Come out of my people, Babylon is fallen. There's a famine of hearing. The trumpet is sounding. The last trumpet, the mystery of God is finished. And now there is a separation. So can you see how... Again, if we look at this, the elements there, I think it has to do with, uh, I looked at that word some time ago. Uh, I think it has to do with the, uh, the type of Gospels that, uh, that are being offered in the churches and congregations. I could be wrong on that, but I have to double check. Uh, as far as I can remember, this is really looking at 
the uh, hold on one second let me take a quick look now this would make sense because when we look at the uh, see the word element here the rudiment the principles this has to do with um, hang on one second Okay, uh, Desi writes, is that verse considered a parable? Yes, most definitely. Most definitely. It is a parable. That's why if we, if we read this verse, we try to relate it to the last day, then we might uh, run into a problem, right? Because the elements here, and, and I used to read this verse thinking that, well, the elements is, uh, that's going to be the buildings, right? The Golden Gate Bridge, uh, the tallest buildings in the world all these things are going to be destroyed well yeah certainly you know but is that is that the way God is actually defining the word element is God defining elements no he's not right so it has to do with the gospel it has to do with the kind of uh, with those that those in the church body yeah the rudiments the principles the oracles of God so I think it boils down to the kind of gospel that is actually being offered. Uh, Matthew writes, Galatians 4, 9, After that ye have known, or rather are known of God, how turn ye again to the weak? Yes, exactly. Amen. Thank you for posting that. Yeah, these are some of the verses that I had actually looked at. Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy, vain deceit. Exactly. Now, can you see, when we go back, you see how important it is once again, right, that we allow the Bible to define the terms. Because on the surface, we'll look at the word element, and then we're thinking that, oh, well, this is talking about God destroying the world, right, planet Earth. Uh, I've been thinking about that verse lately. Yeah. Yeah, amen. Thank you for sharing those verses, uh, Matthew. All right. Uh, we're almost done here. Let's take a look at, I want to look at the word reward. Luke chapter 6, verse 23. Rejoice ye in that day, and leave for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven. Now I believe again that when God is speaking of reward, primarily it starts with uh, the fact that the Bible is unsealed, God is bringing, you know, the believers today, they are understanding time and judgment. And this is uh, one reason I believe, you know, you can imagine that they are no longer subject to the, to the teachings of the false prophets. Alright, uh, just a couple of more verses. It's starting to rain here, so I'm not sure if you can hear it. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. <laughs> yeah. Now, you know, uh, another thing we can talk about a little more, perhaps another time, is that when God is redeeming the body, when we talk about the salvation of, of the body today, is God just talking about you and I or anyone else living here today at this time? Think about this. When Christ was revealed, did he come by himself and then now he is gathering simply those that are actually uh, alive today? No. Yes, exactly, Bible boy. Yeah, all the believers. Now, spiritually, we don't see this, of course, but I believe that when Christ was revealed, he would have been revealed with all the believers, right? He comes with 10,000 of his saints. Very interesting uh, topic, Lord willing, perhaps we can try and develop another time. They, they come with him through the Bible. It is the word of God. You know, the two witnesses, that's Moses and Elijah, right? It is the law and the prophets. So it's as if all the believers, they too, they are witnessing because they identify with Christ. 
right? So it is through God's word they are witnessing. You know, the Bible says that the saints shall judge the world. Yeah, so they identify with Christ. So it's as if now there's a collective voice of all the believers and they are speaking with Christ, right? It is the word of God. Christ is the word. And now they too, from that vantage point, they are judging the unsaved. Amen, yeah. Uh, Hebrews, uh, wake up, writes Hebrews 12, 1. We're forcing, yes, amen, thank you. It is a cloud of witnesses. Very good. It is all the believers. They too, they have been revealed. Christ is never separated from the church body. Does that make sense? Why is that? Well, because the, doesn't the Bible say that he is the head of the body? So if something happens to Christ... It happens uh, spiritually to the believers and vice versa. So again, when we read about the revelation of Christ, we understand today that this is including all those who are a part of the body. Yes, amen. He is in us and we are in Him. Very good. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, I just want to look at the uh, those two verses. Luke chapter 12, verse 33. And try to make a tie in there, a connection with the word destroy. It is the word corrupt. And those that corrupt the earth, again, the locusts, the, un uh, the unsaved, the false prophets, men of corrupt minds, 1 Timothy 6, 5. So that's what I believe is in view there, right? Thou shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. Okay, so let me go ahead and offer a, a very uh, quick conclusion here in this study. And if anything, what I was trying to get across tonight is the timing, the timing of the, of the seventh trumpet. It's already sounding. It has been sounding for some time now, I believe. So the Bible appears to be telling us again that Christ was revealed at the sounding of the seventh trumpet. That was the end. The end of... Christendom, the end of Babylon, the end of the church body, the mystery of God would be finished. But now, God initiates another aspect of His gospel, right? It is one where the believers now they have to sound the alarm. What alarm that is to be sounded today? Primarily, just think about it. Let me go ahead and finish the uh, conclusion. Uh, so the mystery of God was finished. So this would imply God's salvation program would have come to an end. Now he began to unseal the Bible to reveal judgment. So what is the, what is the message? What is the primary uh, alarm that a believer should be sounding today? And if you can share a verse from the Bible, right, that would support that. Don't we read in the book of Revelation? And I think I mentioned it before. Babylon is fallen, right? Babylon is fallen, come out of my people. That's the primary message, I believe. And Bible Boy writes Hebrews 6, 1, Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God. Yeah, uh, you know, today, especially as I said, because God is uh, separating the sheep from the goats, wheat from the tares. So there is a salvation, the redemption of the body. But as I said here that today, I believe the, uh, the believers, they have a task of warning, right? Babylon is fallen. God is judging the churches and congregations. That I believe, uh, you know, is the the dominant message, Lord willing, that the uh, the elect would be sharing today. All right, let me go ahead and uh, let me stop my recorder here for this session. Uh, Althea has a question. Uh, hang on one second. Let me let me switch over. I was beginning to see the uh, the storm here. Uh, hopefully, uh, we're not going to get too much lightning. 
Uh, bear with me one second, I'll feel. 